So in this short video, I want to talk about the role of assumptions in research. I'll start by uh, discussing the negative impact of assumptions, how they can threaten validity of your study and your findings. But then I'll explain how to achieve the opposite, how to utilize uh, the assumptions and make them increase the validity of your findings and make your findings more in-depth and more interesting. So first, let's talk about the negative impact of assumptions on your study, because that's probably something you've previously heard or read about. Usually when you hear assumptions, when you read assumptions in academic discussions, uh, it's being presented as something negative, something predomin predominantly negative, uh, something that poses a threat to validity. Because essentially assumptions, letting uh, assu assumptions take control or, or command your study is essentially about researcher bias, about your own background, some of your knowledge, some of your assumptions or belief uh, having an influence or impact on your study. And this may happen at different stages. So for example, when developing an interview guide, you may be assuming that something is clear to your participants and then in practice is just not something that's clear. As I explained in my other video, one of my first videos on this channel, uh, in my study, in my PhD study, this exact thing happened. I assumed that everybody will know what I'm talking about when I was talking about identity, which is not the case. So that's the first thing. So you may think uh, and assume that your participants will understand what you're talking about. Then of course, uh, your assumptions about the data or your assumptions about what you will find or what you're hoping to find may also negatively impact your data analysis. So again, you're trying to uh, basically see what you want to see in your data. And finally, uh, there are so many other ways in which assumptions may have an impact on your study. So for example, during the interview itself, there is a, a known issue of assumptions about uh, shared knowledge, which basically means that you, you know something, your participant knows something. So there is, a, there is no need to say that. So you're kind of basically both assuming that you know what you're talking about, which is all fine until you find yourself in front of your computer screen, you have to analyze your data and you realize that this stuff has actually not been said because you assumed that they know and they assumed that you know. So that's, that's uh, assumptions about shared knowledge, very dangerous thing because essentially it leaves you with no data to analyze. So there are no doubt many ways in which assumptions may negatively impact your study, but how about that positive influence and how do we utilize your assumptions to increase validity and generally to make your study better and more interesting. So uh, I asked this question in, on my Facebook group as I was preparing for this video and some of your answers were absolutely spot on. So the first thing, the first argument, and that's something I usually use as an argument in favor of using assumptions for your benefit is that assumptions essentially help your data analysis. They help drive your data analysis. So I often say that assumptions give you ideas. They give you leads. They give you uh, things and hunches to explore and follow up in your data analysis. So if you did not have any assumptions, then you may find yourself in a situation where you're completely stuck and you're not sure what to do next. So it is a good thing to have your assumptions about the data because then you may go and, and see if that's in fact, uh, if there is evidence for that in your data. And that kind of leads to the second uh, thing, the second comment I really liked when I asked this question. And that comment was about uh, not hiding assumptions. Uh, it was saying that assumptions can be good if you talk about them. And that's exactly right again. So assumptions, is uh, are something uh, that you should talk about definitely not something you should try to avoid or try to hide or try to ignore because it's just not going to help you at all so uh, instead you should be very uh, upfront and open about your assumptions so this will be for several reasons one of them will be of course to demonstrate to your readers your supervisors that you were thinking about assumptions and and uh, through which process you essentially you are again increasing validity of your study because you are controlling your bias, researcher bias. If you're thinking about your assumptions, you are becoming aware of them. There is a less chance of these assumptions, in fact, controlling your study. So that's the first reason you definitely want to be talking about your assumptions. It will This will strengthen your study, something probably to put in your methodology uh, in your methodology section. But the second reason is uh, purely, again, to enhance your, your data analysis and enhance your study. So uh, one of the techniques that I discuss in my self-study course on data analysis 
is uh, again talking about your assumptions early on so the first thing is to reflect in a diary or somewhere reflect on your assumptions early in your data analysis so that later throughout the process of data analysis you can revisit these assumptions you can again see what was your assumption early on in the study and compare to what's happening now so essentially you're uh, you're reminding yourself of your assumptions and this may help you control the assumption may help you decide which one uh, of uh, what you're finding in the moment whatever you're finding which is the actual finding and which is maybe based on your assumption and the second thing that i recommend doing in that self-study course is actually creating a diagram or a model based on your assumptions. So, so again, something, a technique I sometimes uh, do, sometimes use when I'm stuck in my analysis, I create a diagram or a model. So I may be very early on in the analysis, but I may still create a diagram or a model uh, that uh, suggests some kind of a, a either relationship or something that's going on in my data. So as I explained in that course, don't worry if there is no, no evidence for, uh, to support that model because that's the whole point it may be completely entirely based on your assumptions and it's a good thing because what you will what you will do next is go uh, back to data analysis and explore and try to uh, try to find evidence to support that model in doing so you may either find evidence that will support that model which obviously is a great thing or you will not find any evidence to support that model which is also a great thing or maybe even find something that completely dismisses that model in either case is good because you will understand your data further so by dismissing that model uh, th this outcome is just as valuable to yourself as uh, supporting that model because then you know at least that these leads these ideas these assumptions were uh, were wrong and maybe it's time to do something else try to investigate something else so to summarize although assumptions of course can be a very negative thing they may have a, a negative impact on your study they may pose threat uh, to validity of your study if you're uh, doing it right they can actually be a great thing so the, uh, so never try to ignore them never try to uh, pretend that they don't exist instead talk about them tell others about them uh, recognize them and and, and uh, be become aware of your assumptions write about your assumptions and if there is a need develop some kind of models like i said so essentially they can be a dangerous thing but they can also be a great thing that will help you help your study and help your data analysis